Hi, I'm Alex Mejia, and I'm going to give you a practical lesson of what color management is. Now, if you've ever heard people say the following, <sighs> This looked better on my monitor. This is way too dark, Cheetos. It didn't look that blue before I printed it. I can't see shit! Then chances are it's a color management problem. Color management is the act of ensuring that colors from one medium end up being the same or as close as possible to another medium. Now, color management is like good sound in a movie. We ignore it when it's working right, but when something goes wrong, we just want to rip up everything until it's fixed. But before we dive into color management, it's useful to understand how displays work. Now, computers don't understand color the way that you or I understand it. Computers talk directly in RGB values. In most instances, these are 8-bit values, meaning that they have 256 steps between black and white. So a value halfway between these points, like 128, should be 50% gray, right? Well, not really. A value of 128 actually represents a gray value of about 20%. Why? Because this is how CRTs worked back in the day when these things were being decided. While I won't bore you with all the mathematical details, it is important to understand that there is much more complexity going on than you might imagine. Fortunately, a generation of engineering nerds have figured all of this out and come up with a set of standards that ensure that colors remain consistent across different displays. Because of the complexity of various types of displays, connectors, and software on the market, engineers came up with standards called color spaces that dictate how to encode and decode content. Now, one way of visualizing color space is the CIE 1931 chart. Now, the CIE chart might look scary and might make some of us go cross-eyed, but I'll walk you through the important parts. The part of the chart with the color inside is all visible light. The X and Y values map hue and saturation. Inside the visible light spectrum, you'll see a shape. It usually has three points for red, green, and blue pixels. This shape is called the gamut of the color space. Now, the position and size of the gamut determine how many shades a color can reproduce. So when I dial in 128 red, 32 green, and 66 blue, it produces this wavelength of light. Cool, huh? Now, usually there's a white point labeled with a color temperature. This is where the most intense red, green, and blue primaries fire together to create white. So now that you know how to read the CIE chart, let's look at some real color spaces. This one is sRGB. This is the color space for almost all computers, smartphones, and even some televisions. And here's another one. This one is called Adobe RGB, another commonly used color space for photos and wide gamut monitors. Now, if we put both color spaces on the same chart, it's easy to see that Adobe RGB is able to display more colors than sRGB. If you had an Adobe RGB display, you could accurately display every color in sRGB space. But if you try to do the reverse, there are not enough colors to represent this larger space. But there are ways around this. So imagine for a second that you've painted a beautiful painting. Remind me not to quit my day job. And you've drawn this painting with 12 colors. You then hand this painting off to another artist, but he only has nine colors to reproduce the painting with. And to make things worse, he doesn't even have the same colors that you used. What is he to do? Well, he could attempt to mix the two colors in a fine pattern called dithering to give the appearance of more colors than there actually are. This is an optical illusion. He could attempt to substitute colors that aren't exactly the same and then modify some of the other colors to give the same perceptual appearance. He could just say, well, damn it, I have these nine colors and seven of them are exactly the same. So I'm just gonna use these seven colors that we have that match and not even bother with the others. These are actual techniques that color management systems use to translate from one color space to another. Regardless of what techniques are used, it's important to know that starting in a larger color space than your target will create trade-offs when you eventually have to downgrade color spaces. So when authoring your content, always pick the largest color space where your content could possibly go. If you're working on PCs or mobile, sRGB is a good place to start. So I've thrown around a lot of theoretical terms and some eye-crossing charts. Let's run through a real color management workflow. Now the goal of this practice is for two artists to see the exact same material across two different displays. So to start off, this artist is going to draw an apple, and it needs to be the exact right color and the exact right shade to fit into this already painted scene. The first thing the artist does is make sure his room is set up properly for the color space he's working in. Every color space will have a list of rules not only for the display, 
but for the room you're monitoring in it. In this instance, it calls for a gray background with backlighting at 5000 Kelvin that is only 64 lux and is diffused. He then gets a monitor that has a hardware lookup table built in. This aids in being able to easily and accurately get his monitor calibrated and profiled to a certain color space. Now it takes about six minutes to do this calibration and profile process, but it only takes me about two seconds to do this 360 no scope. Once the environment is tweaked and the monitor is calibrated, a second step happens automatically during calibration. An ICC profile is dropped onto the PC. Now this ICC file lets the computer know about any parts of the display that couldn't be calibrated exactly to spec. Any color managed application knows about the small inaccuracies in the monitor and adjusts for them in software. This ensures 100% accuracy to the standard when your monitor may only be 99.9% .9 of the way there. Now the artist can freely create the asset in his color managed application of choice. He doesn't have to worry about compensating for an output medium being too dark or too saturated since the other artist has done all the same steps for their viewing environment. Every 600 hours, each artist should recalibrate their display to ensure they are looking at the same image. Due to how backlights work in displays, they will get darker over time, causing you to create images that are too bright if you neglect to calibrate on a regular basis. You need to remember that color management is a professional tool that allows a group of artists to see the exact same thing across multiple displays. When you get home, the user could be doing something really weird with their display that you couldn't even account for. Oh man, dynamic contrast, give me some more of that. When your customer watches your content at home, it's not gonna be the exact same thing you saw in your properly calibrated suite. But it's worth noting that if you chose a color space that your medium targets and that everybody in the supply chain is attempting to target, you'll have small variations in uncalibrated viewing, but you won't have huge variations like a red apple being completely green or pink. If you want to know more about color management, you can always contact me these ways. And please, don't forget to calibrate your display every 600 hours. Thank you, and good night.